Hey guys, welcome back to All in Unlaw. In this short video, I'm going to talk about newborn pulse oximeter test. Sorry, pulse oximeter test for a this is a screening test for critical congenital heart diseases. Critical congenital heart diseases. Actually, uh, this what you call uh, the congenital critical congenital heart disease are missed on a routine examination. Congenital heart diseases are the incidence is nine per every thousand live births. So for every thousand thousand live births, nine cases will be called as a congenital heart disease. Out of which, twenty five percent of this will have a critical congenital heart disease. That I would like to talk talk. What is it? C C H D. The critical congenital heart disease, the congenital heart disease that requires surgery and catheter intervention in the first year of the life, that is known as a critical congenital heart disease. And this congenital malformation are one of the leading causes of infant death in the United States and other developing nations. So the CCHD, that is a critical uh, what you call uh, uh, congenital heart disease, is responsible for more deaths than any other type of congenital malformation. Usually, in NICU or in the nursery, we diagnose by the what you call by doing a physical examination like if we hear a heart murmur then if we have a tachypnea it's not subsiding except other than the tachypnea ttnb and rds cyanosis then we advise for the echo right so if everything goes okay we usually don't advise for the echo normally right so now this they came up with an idea of a pulse oximetry screening test in which we are gonna find out and we, our aim is to not to miss a single case of CCHD. The diagnosis of CCHD, the physical examination usually occurs within 24 hours. There is a two criteria are there. Okay. So remember, let us talk about the pulse uh, oximetry screening test and how it is done. There are two things in this. One, this test will be done after 24 hours of baby is born after 24 hours or if the discharge is prior to that it can be done within 24 hours the reason why we do within over after 24 hours is because of the neonatal transition that takes up to 24 hours the PDA is a patent and because of this it can mislead the diagnosis and we can name it as a positive pulse oximeter screening test and unnecessary tests can be done to avoid all those things it's better to be done after 24 to 48 hours if the discharge is prior to that, we can do it before. Now, this screening test, it is done and what happens, there are two results. Remember, always the things is that, as we know, that there are two things. One is, this is a right upper limb and this is left upper limb. And this is a left, uh, right lower limb and the left lower limb. This is checked over here, right upper limb, that's the pre and these are the post right so the pre if what happens if any saturation more than or oh, sorry first i will take lesser than less than 90 saturation is less than 90 percent on the right hand or any of the three or sorry or any of the what you call two feet two feet then directly you can label it as a positive screening and do an echo Usually, it is done in the nursery, and uh, nurses are advised to do this so that the, if the saturations on the right hand or the foot on a day two is less than 90, they mark it as a positive screening, inform the doctor, and plan for echo. Okay, and the other possibility is if it is more than 95 percentage in the right hand or foot, more than 95 percentage. In the right hand or foot remember okay or the foot 
or the difference between the right hand and the foot is less than 3% saturation, less than 3%, then it can be taken as a negative screening test. No need to inform the doctor. You can document and what you call do a no need of echo. Okay. Now the problem comes if there is a variation in the what you call uh, saturations. For example, if the saturations are between 90 to 95, as we know less than 90, straight away goes to the positive screening, echo has to be done. If it's 90 to 95 percent of saturation in the right hand and or foot or in the foot, it's a more than 3 percent, okay, or in the right hand and the foot here, sorry, I would like to write, right hand foot is 90 to 95 percent in the right hand and the foot or more than 3% difference between these two can lead to what you call this has to be rechecked after one hour. Okay. The possibilities can be it can be in less than 90. If it's less than 90, take it as a negative screening test, take it as a positive screening test, inform the doctor, do plan to do an echo. Or oh, if it's more than 95 percentage after one hour, then it can it can be marked as a positive screening test and sorry negative screening test and what can be done no need of echo right it's a normal if still the results are same you can do one more thing one more time you can repeat the same results and you see after one hour if the still the results are same then you can mark it as a positive screening there's a positive screening and plan for echo so by this we will be able to uh, diagnose uh, what you call the small proportion of the CCHD, the critical congenital heart disease. Right? So, this is a simple video to understand about the pulse oximetry screening test done in the newborns. Okay, guys. So, remember, usually in US, delayed or missed diagnosis of CCHD may occur up to what you call 7 per uh, what you call 100,000. 100,000, 7 might be missed. Or possibly sometimes more also okay so these are really very important and what are the problems of critical congenital heart disease is short-term complication and the long-term complications so we have a complications if we miss what happens of CC actually critical congenital heart disease is two things can happen one is a short-term complications and one is the long-term complications the short-term compli complications can be a cardiorespiratory compromise, cardiorespiratory compromise, hemodynamic instability, and a shock. Whereas the long-term complications sequel from the short-term problems are what you call chronic hypoxia, both causing a brain injury from ischemia and a reperfusion. Okay, so these things can affect the brain, it can affect the speech, it can affect the language, visual motor perception, executive function and what you call these, when these things are affected and it can lead to what you call abnormal, um, what you call, these are the complications that you usually see if these are the CCHD is not treated properly, right? So it's better to diagnose it early so that we can avoid these complications. Okay, guys. Well, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Do subscribe. Take care. Bye.